What's up, everyone? Welcome to the latest episode of the Hashkey Learn video series, where we speak to experts and professionals in the crypto industry to understand the most important subjects in the world of digital assets. Now, today I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Dora Luo, who is Chief Marketing Officer of Hashquark. Hello, Dora. Hello. Um, so today we are going to talk about uh, staking. Now, many people view staking as one of the most unique aspects in the world of crypto, right? Uh, lots of listeners or lots of investors, they're always looking for uh, recurring and secondary income. And staking offers exactly that alternative option for these investors. Now, today, Dora will break, uh, will break down with us, you know, what staking is, uh, the pros and cons of staking, and how exactly are these yields generated from these uh, proof of stake blockchains. Uh, so Dora, let's just dive uh, straight in, shall we? Now, before we talk about staking, I think it's very important to define the groundwork and mechanism in which uh, staking was built on. Now, staking is, I would say, you know, the bread and butter of proof of stake uh, blockchains, which is proof of stake, which is one of the consensus mechanisms um, in the world of crypto. Now, as far as now, as far as we know, the first consensus mechanism that existed is proof of work which is what the Bitcoin network is built on, right? Now, how does proof of work work? And what are some of its major flaws? Um, okay, so first uh, first of all, uh, both proof of work and proof of stake are consensus of a decentralized network. Uh, a consensus is a fundamental uh, agreement of how a network works. Um, so as the first uh, consensus of a algorithm ever implemented in uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, the basic idea of POW is uh, the miner who first solved the problem, uh, first earns the rights to add a block of trans transaction to the ever-growing chain of the uh, consecutive blocks. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, creating a single and uh, history of data on POW chain. So I would say POW is always facing three main challenges, um, accessibility, uh, centralization, and uh, scalability. Uh, first, uh, the accessibility is low, uh, the barrier to, uh, entry the, uh, to entry to becoming a POW miner is very high. Um, mm -hmm. uh, miners must buy and set up mining rigs, and uh, the maintaining is also hard work. And the uh, POW mining, mining is uh, extremely um, en uh, energy intensive. Mm -hmm. uh, electricity cost is the key factor of miners' profit. So people always say uh, POW is a huge waste of uh, resources. And secondly, uh, the barrier to entry for mining may cause the centralization of miners. Um, as it gets more costly and uh, less profitable to become a miner, uh, the network usually, um, naturally, uh, we can see a concentration of large capital in mining industry. So that's caused the problem of uh, centralization. Uh, and at last, scalability is the biggest uh, bottleneck restricting the network uh, development. Uh, since each block is mined consecutively and the block size is quite limited, uh, like if there are now the transaction is slow and the, uh, the gas word is very common when the network is congested. So that's the flaws of POW. Obviously, we're here to talk about proof of stake today. So now let's compare proof of stake and proof of work. These two very popular consensus mechanisms. Now, how does proof of stake, how does the proof of stake model work differently? And how do these, and how do this model address the shortcomings of the proof of work model? Yeah, okay. Due to the major flaws I've mentioned just now, uh, POS, uh, proof of staking is becoming, uh, mainstream for most layer one, uh, infrastructure in blockchain. So comparing, um, POW with POS, uh, we may find many, uh, differences between them. Uh, so I may just name some of them. Uh, um, sure. Mm. Uh, first, uh, POW, uh, gives voting power to all those who providing computer po computing power, uh, or we say miners, uh, and uses computing power as the unit to measure the weight of uh, uh, nodes or the validator's income. Uh, but POS uh, giving votes uh, to validators and they use, uh, use the number of the stake token 
as the unit to measure the weight of income. Um, and second, uh, the original idea of POW is to allow all the network participants to record every uh, transaction. So every node in the network should do the bookkeeping, uh, which will co- uh, which cause the efficiency is very low. And uh, each transaction of POS uh, only needs the stakers, or we say uh, qualified nodes or validators to validate the transaction. Uh, and since the total number of validator in a POS network usually has an upper limit, uh, or uh, there are certain requirements for the number of uh, uh, currency uh, holders. Mm-hmm. So the nodes um, mal- um, malicious ca- accounting will be uh, fined and the token will be uh, confiscated. Um, so which can reduce the number of bookkeeper um, for each transaction and improve the efficiency on the uh, premise of uh, reducing the risk of malicious uh, nodes. And that would uh, make POS network uh, has higher performance than POW. Now, and- let's go back to staking. I Can you define or can you explain in very simple terms, what does it mean to stake a coin? Um, okay, to, in, uh, um, in simple terms, uh, staking is a strategy uh, that you can uh, generate uh, passive income and you mm. simply uh, de- deposit coins uh, for a fixed period of time and you can earn the interest. And uh, to uh, stake a coin, uh, participants should first pledge their tokens to the protocols and they may choose to run a validator by themselves or by a third party uh, uh, staking provider mm. uh, or just simply uh, dedicate their token to any validator in the network. Mm. And uh, Oh, and participants will receive the token rewards uh, periodically. Yeah. Oh, you mentioned um, delegation and that and and uh, and a validation. So obviously, um, investors when they delegate, you know, their their coins to staking, you know, they are the delegators, right? They delegate their coins to validators. Now, how do you suggest the de- um, delegators to choose validators? Like what are some of the prerequisites or kind of requirements? Like what should delegators be looking for in a validator before they actually um, stick their coins? Uh, yeah, for actually for uh, most retail investors, uh, exchange, uh, the cryptocurrency exchanges may provide uh, this kind of staking uh, service and mm. that can uh, you know, it's very suitable for the retail investors' uh, daily use. Uh, but for institutional uh, customers, uh, they yeah. can choose a professional staking provider to uh, help them build the build a node. Uh, and uh, like Hashcard, we can do the uh, staking. Uh, pro- uh, we can provide a staking service, and mm. the uh, the customer may obtain higher income and uh, has more uh, professional service uh, through. Uh, uh, professional validators. But the income through a, a professional uh, staking provider uh, is usually uh, much more higher than they can earn uh, from an exchange. Uh, mm. From the exchanges, yeah, uh, most will um, uh, up to fifty to one hundred percent higher than uh, the earnings they can earn from uh, exchanges. So uh, in terms of uh, how to choose, I think uh, first the reputation is very important. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can see the track record of the staking provider, uh, like how many how many slashes uh, they uh, ha- ever happened in their mm. history, and uh, uh, how big are they? Uh, is it safe to put your coin uh, in their uh, validators? Now, another question that many people are asking is just how exactly are these yield generated or how do these proof of stake blockchains define uh, this yield in the first place? Uh, well, the the interest rate is just given by the network and the number is usually calculated uh, based on the network's token economy. Yeah. Now, we've been talking a lot about, you know, how good proof of stake blockchain is, right? But there's, you know, but there's obviously a con to every story. 
Can you can you tell us what are some of the downsides of proof of stake blockchains? Uh, yes. Uh, so first, uh, the POW ha- uh, POW has uh, proven uh, an extremely secure and trustworthy uh, consensus mechanism. Uh, however, mm-hmm. since uh, POS hasn't been around uh, long enough to prove its security of this, uh, uh, so uh, um, so that's the first first thing. Mm-hmm. And second. Staking is a very safe way to earn passive income. So the yield for uh, staking assets is relatively low uh, okay. to comparing with uh, those of uh, DeFi protocols with lending or yield farming uh, functionality. Um, besides, uh, inability to access instant liquidity is another mm. uh, cons of um, POS. Uh, cause, uh, protocol imposed, uh, unbounding or unstaking time restriction to ensure the, uh, security of the network. Um, so, the, um, you know, there are uh, opportunity cost of, uh, stake the assets cannot be used for other purpose like borrowing or lending. Yeah. And can you give us an idea of the yields of the most popular? Uh, proof of stake blockchains, for example, I don't know, uh, Polkadot, Solana, and Neo Protocol, etc. Can you give us a rough idea of what is the range of these uh, POS blockchains yield, respectively? Yeah, it's uh, basically it's uh, from five percent to ten uh, percent. So more, most popular uh, uh, layer one infrastructure provides that uh, uh, number. Blockchain projects will pro- uh, provide a uh, much higher uh, interest rate to attracting uh, validator to join their networks. Uh, so mm-hmm. I've seen uh, the highest one can be fifty uh, percent uh, the APY. Yeah. You also just mentioned DeFi staking as well. Right now, as far as we know, DeFi staking sometimes offer insanely high APYs and yields. Now, can you tell us? What are the major differences between the normal, you know, the locked staking versus DeFi staking? And how exactly are these high APYs defined and generated in the first place? Uh, DeFi staking is essentially uh, derivatives with higher intern, a uh, re- higher return of uh, mm. uh, greater, uh, come with greater risks. And yep. DeFi staking is basically to use a contract to enable the users to get a certific- certificate after they they are staking and mm. uh, those uh, certificates are usually tokens issued by the uh, DeFi protocols. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the certificate or the token can be used for transaction and uh, DeFi uh, activities, uh, providing liquidity for uh, staked assets. Um, however, um, DeFi staking still has many security loopholes um including the reliable smart uh, smart contract and the chain reaction caused by extreme mm. uh, market conditions yeah and last but not least before we end the discussion i think it's also important to talk about risks right um obviously it's very attractive to earn you know such such high apys on these uh blockchains on these investments but are there any risks or inherent dangers of staking cryptocurrencies that investors and holders should know about? Yes, uh, the sharp drop of the token price during the market crash of pro- cryptocurrency is definitely the biggest risk okay. of staking. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it doesn't really matter if you are a long-term token holder. Uh, and of course, for um, most uh, POS network, redemption usually has a lockup period from uh, three to 30 days, uh, which will reduce the uh, liquidity of staked assets. Uh, mm. So it may, uh, it seems, it may be a danger to many people when the market uh, fluctuated violently, yeah. yeah. Well, I think this is also a good note to end uh, today's discussion. Um, well, first of all, Dora, thank you so much for explaining in such comprehensive detail Everything we need, uh, investors should know about staking. Now, um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to get in touch with us. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome to hashcorp.io and check our service. <laughs> yes, check out hashcorp as well.
Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you.